Sometimes I'm extremely hyper aware and observant and other times I enter my vehicle and I'm like, where did these stickers come from? <laughs> like I have not seen that before and I've had this vehicle over two years <laughs> and there's one on each side. Like what? I don't know. Hello, it's Maxine. <laughs> Today I was in a pretty upset mood earlier, like easily I was able to, um, you know, sometimes like I can fixate on something and it can like bother me the entire day or it depends like, or throughout the day, like of course if I distract myself then it's not as bad, but, um, I just feel like I've been really hurt and let down by one of the members of Love on the Spectrum. And to say that maybe seems kind of silly. Well, no, you don't know that person. Um, no, that person didn't ask to be a role model or a, like a influencer or something. But if you are on social media and then you're expressing really poor points of view on autism and kind of trying to, um, anyway, um, the gist of what I'm trying to say is that, uh, there's a lot of autistic parents and maybe some autistic people, it seems that they're, um, it's like gatekeeping. Like they're trying to say that because their child's level or their own level of autism is worse than, or worse, like in terms of social, um, independence, um, like communication, driving, whatever the case may be, living independently, like, I didn't mean worse, but I mean worse as in just like, just less independent. I mean, to some people, it's not worse to be amongst family and like to have their needs taken care of and stuff. Like, it's just, um, you know, sometimes I don't think of the right thing to say. But, um, for me, I just feel a little hurt because, you know, I looked up to this person and I thought, like, oh, they're just such a great mom. They've done so much for their daughter. Um, I don't think their daughter would have, like, been able to develop her abilities and her strengths as much as she would be today if she hadn't had those interventions due to the parenting. Because, for example, and I do take this very personally, is because I grew up in an abusive environment where my needs weren't being met, my basic needs weren't being met. It was like being in fight and flight mode every single day. And so when it came to education or intervention or speech therapy or anything I needed, it was like not there. And because of that, I do suffer with a lot of the stuff today. Um, I've obviously come like a he I say obviously because I feel like I can just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. I could probably talk till I'm out of breath. I could talk till I'm blue in the face. I could talk till, <laughs> till I'm exhausted. Does that mean I'm not autistic? I don't think so. I think I've seen a lot of autistic people kind of surprise me because I didn't know anything about autism till I was like in my late 20s. So my knowledge of autism was like the level three, as I've said before, which could be um, a lot less like independent in their day-to-day -day living. And um, it's like, sometimes it's hard to say, or, like say the right thing when it comes to that, but everyone knows what I'm speaking about and there's no shame in it. It's just like, there's different levels. And when stress comes on in my life, like I'm not that high functioning, to be honest. Like I struggle in relationships and so many things I don't even really feel like getting into. Sometimes I do disclose, sometimes I just feel a little guarded, but um, I just think that, uh, We just need to be really careful when you're going on the internet and saying, well, because 
so-and-so or all these people or influencers with a big following or whatever it is because they display signs that are unlike my child then they're not autistic they're neuro different and I really that really bothers me um I think like yes you have experience I'm not diminishing your experience and I'm not diminishing what you've had to go through as a parent all those really hard times but what you are dim you are in turn it's like being a hypocrite like you're putting people down a whole community of people who maybe have been able to accomplish quite a lot more in their life than what you would think an autistic person but that's because of stereotypes and and it's all it is very confusing right because there's shows where it's like the autistic doctor and then there's the person I understand like in a sense what they're trying to get to but this person also idolizes Temple Grandin, which, I mean, she, like, does public speaking. She's, like, she ha is highly educated, an advocate for autistic people. And why is she allowed to be autistic in your mind, but not the rest of us? Like, so only uh, some people fit the bill, even if it just doesn't make sense to me. It's very confusing. And it makes me feel personally hurt because I was diagnosed late in life. So some people would say, how is that even possible? Well, I've made a <laughs> over hour long video about all the ways I was autistic more like pretty severely, I guess, as a child. And then I kind of outgrew some of my things. And you know what? Like, because we're growing as children, our brains developing, in some ways, I guess I'm a little thankful that I wasn't diagnosed as a child because, or maybe I was and my parents decided to keep that information from me. I don't have any clue, but um, in some ways I am thankful for that because it kind of pushed me to do things as a neurotypical person would have to do, which forced me to, to, to develop my skills, but at the same time, it's extremely hard on the other hand because masking is incredibly painful and and then there's the bullying and all the things I did experience not knowing who I was as a person and it's just a very complex thing like it <laughs> if I get onto one subject then I'm gonna be branching out into a thousand different directions because it just affects every single thing and who you see today in front of you on the screen wherever you're watching from and however you're interpreting me and what I'm saying, if you saw me like in every stage of my life, like 10 years ago, 10 years before that, 10 years before, like, or every five years even, like I've just come a huge, like a long way in terms of my communication development, my thinking, um, how I can relate, like less black and white thinking, um, just being able to understand myself better, which helps me help others to understand me or to know my limits. And it just makes life a lot better knowing yourself. And I could have used everything from speech therapy to I was undiagnosed with dyslexia. And if I have to, I will go above and beyond to prove I have it someday. I've never seen a specialist in the area of it but um like one small example is I'll always say that when I was taking notes in school I'd constantly put letters in front of the other and I think that's an abnormal thing and I would say things for the wrong word even like in my head I was thinking of something say I'm looking at a bird and I call it a turkey or something when it's a loon I don't know like just things like that like or pen and toothbrush that was an example just things would just spit out of my head and it's like where am I going with this <laughs> The sun was making me incredibly hot and distracted. Okay. 
Okay, so I just think it's incredibly harmful to say, like, ha okay, let's just say, for example, someone's ba just barely autistic. They did the whole test and they're like one point away from being autistic in the psychologist's mind, which the psychologist is one sole person. So based on her education or his uh, education, his understanding, his knowledge, that's one sole person having the fate in your hands. Well, for me, I like I was diagnosed at a much higher level, but I'm just trying to give an example. So that's one person. And then say they were diagnosed, even though they were one point off or whatever. <laughs> but just knowing that about themselves suddenly helped them so much more. It gave them validation. It made everything in their past made sense. It, um, it just helped them to educate themselves more and to even to you know stop judging or discriminating against others because you like just had little to no knowledge about it before because I think it hasn't really been talked about much and since honestly like love on the spectrum and TikTok came out and there's that honestly nothing wrong with that like I think it's that knowledge and understanding is saving lives because it is a spectrum and it's a wheel. So some people might strive in like a lot of different ways and then there there's deficits or whatever in other ways. And, and then it's never linear. Like sometimes it's up and down. Sometimes I even think my communication is getting worse with age, sadly. But all, another thing too is I never ever used to make videos like these in my life, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, all I wanted to say about that is I think you should leave it to the professionals. I think they know what they're doing. I think they have the medical background. I think they have the the tools and knowledge, understanding. They have like all the research behind them, like. Maybe you've done your own personal research, but I think that your thinking is pretty black and white. Um, just to relate your own child and your own experience and say, this has to fit the mold. Like everyone else has to be like this. Otherwise you're not autistic. You're neuro different or whatever she said. So I just find that really wrong because then you're essentially saying that half or more of the cast of love on the spectrum wasn't actually autistic you're saying that the people who could drive or work or live independently or want to live independently or do, have had successful relationships aren't autistic so that's essentially that only leaves how many people on the show who don't like not very many so, yeah, I know I shouldn't take it personally. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion and I shouldn't let one person's opinion bother me this much. It's just, and I am starting to let go of it. I'm like, really, what does it matter? But to me, it hurt a little bit because I really looked up to this person. I thought they were doing the right thing. I thought they were setting a good example. I thought they were, um a good role model. I thought they understood the spectrum. I thought they, you know, <laughs> dogs. I just, um, I think what they're doing right now with spreading that on social media right now, it seems a little bit like, is it a strategic move? Like, oh, so you want to gain more audience who agree with you? Like, what is it? Is it going to become a witch hunt? Like, all of you guys are going to collect and decide, oh, this person's not autistic. Like, <laughs> I mean, please find something better to do with your time. Like, I mean, here I am talking about it. But to me, it is important because I just know that somebody I looked up to would be looking down on me for having an autistic diagnosis, which I have an autistic diagnosis. I have ADHD diagnosis. I have OCD diagnosis depressive disorder, CPTSD, anxiety. Some has been worse in my life. 
other times things have gotten a lot better, thankfully. And things have especially gotten better in the past just over a year now that I've officially been diagnosed. It just made everything make sense in my childhood to now. Anyways, instead of me um, continuing on and like saying anything that sounds like judgment towards that person, well, I haven't said anything specific about how I feel about that person. I just think, well, what they're doing is wrong in my mind. And honestly, I think that people with that mindset and mentality shouldn't be invited back onto the show. Maybe that seems a little harsh, but you, I should have realized like a lot of people were kind of making comments that I just didn't see because once I like somebody, I kind of just try to see the good in everything they do. And I try to understand their intentions and like see both sides in what they say. And I just did my very, I did my very best to try to do that, but then now I'm like, you know what? It goes back to that Jubilee Spectrum interview bet between um, autistic and neurotypical people. And there were very clear indications in there that there was discrimination happening against people who are considered higher functioning or whatever, like autistic. Um, I think we should stop using that altogether because I just think that we should just maybe stick to the levels of it or, or whatever and not consider it high functioning because because although we may s just barely get by in function in some ways we could be like teetering onto level two in terms of the ability to take care of ourselves due to stress or depression or when things like this happen and it's like it makes you question everything so Anyway, I think these important these discussions on autism are important to have, but not when it comes to taking away someone's diagnosis or trying to come up with a new DSM-5 like label. I think that I think there are people who, there are people who just barely identify with some autistic traits and then they try to get a diagnosis and they are shut down they're not and they might be just neurodivergent like you say but um <laughs> there's a bird eating like a oh my gosh a crab claw anyway <laughs> um <laughs> And I'm not trying to conceal my identity. I just, um, I used to always wear glass sunglasses, like every time I left the house. And even sometimes when I went into the store, cause the bright lights have always bothered me and my eyes water and stuff. But then I don't know, I broke my glasses and I couldn't really afford to, <laughs> I just didn't buy new sunglasses. And then I went without them for a long time. And I guess I just learned to adapt. It's kind of like one of those things where you just kind of, in my life, I've just had to adapt to situations, whether I liked it or not, and struggled greatly in doing so. I mean, yeah, I don't want to keep up bringing the same trauma from my childhood, but uh, please look back to my other videos if you are curious about what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that I am lucky to be here, be here today, and... It's just a beautiful day in Victoria, so I'm distracted by the beauty of it all, but it just, it, like, I try, I'm trying to understand what the motive is to try to, um, to say false and that's like, 
false information. Even if it's your opinion, it's false and it's going to start spreading some sort of hatred and misunderstanding towards autistic people. And I'm trying to want like, what is it? Like, what is the big reason for you to do that? Is it to gain a different audience for financial gain? Is it because you're so worried that suddenly there's going to be less resources for autistic people who are really higher on the scale? Like, if anything, it's just going to hopefully create more jobs and more opportunities and more inclusivity and more community and more groups that can help people because autism does affect so many people and so many families that people who have the money are going to be able to like contribute to these organizations to help autistic people thrive and that's only going to be done so if the knowledge and information gets out there to help the pe people and the people who are in denial or the people who are late diagnosed or early diagnosed whatever it may be we're all equal and we all matter and it's all important and it doesn't need to have a different label it doesn't need to go have to go back to as aspergers or i don't even know how you say it but um that's just how i feel i mean again like she's valid to her opinion and i'm valid to mine maybe Who knows who's right who knows who's wrong i feel right in this situation because um like just looking back to the little girl that i was and all those interventions that could have helped me tremendously in terms of my speech and focus and school and education and um, my ocd tendencies and the, um maybe even getting me out, out of the abusive environment i was at home and but then possibly into foster care, which could have been worse, better or worse, who knows? Like, in having these conversations, it's like, yes, I'm so grateful for everything I have been given. I'm thankful for all these opportunities I've had. And I'm thankful it's like made me the person I am today. But on the other hand, it's like, I really wish I could have seen what... I was capable of as a little girl if I hadn't gone through the trauma of um like just being autistic alone without the trauma I think I'd be a lot more successful today in a lot of ways because I can just see that the families who are really supportive really like just well-rounded good people the p type of families that wind up on the show like love on the spectrum they are the supportive families that raise like successful happy like or well not i know like to find happiness but um anyway one last thing with that is i think that it's um something that actually bothered me before this whole discussion on who's autistic who's not is the fat shaming so in the first season i kind of laughed it off with everyone like oh the dog is fat and um you can't get fat in california or whatever you can't be a fat dog in california okay that's fine and then um the second season's brought up again and then the jubilee spectrum video um all the trolls are apparently so horribly overweight i just thought you know, I know she's not a child and she's an adult, so she can like speak her mind and her opinion, whatever it may be. But you could just tell that um, there's a lot of interruption with some of her thought processes. And then with things like that, it's kind of smug, like she's allowed to say that and she's not going to correct that. Like, why is that okay? So... I feel this sense of um, discrimination against high functioning autistic people and fat phobia. So both of those I take personally. And 
it just makes me wonder, like, I really want to say something that I'm not going to say, but it's kind of like something really doesn't sit right with that. And, um, I hope it's not, um, comments made to try to influence as, influence others in their life to try to, um, take different like health measures or something. And that's just, I mean, we all judge. I'm just saying that solely in terms of like a, like a, um, the beauty standard, like how everyone's BMI should be and fitness and, you know, like, it just makes me wonder if like, oh, they're trying to say that to try to kind of like make some people around them uncomfortable to try to change their ways. And if that's the case, well, I don't know. I just find that really sad. That's my interpretation. Um, you know, I haven't named names or anything. I think it's going to be very obvious who I'm speaking about, but, um, and who am I? I mean, I don't have a million followers or whatever, like they do. And it's not about that. I just think my, I think I just always have had this like strong sense of justice. I feel like I'm the superhero where I have to speak up when things, because I used to not be like that at all. I used to not be able to speak up against what was wrong. Um, at times, like as, you know, if I saw someone like just pulling their dog leash too hard on the road or something, it would like make me yell out, at, shout at people and like more, not just like that, like actual abuse things I've seen on the streets. Like I'm, I never shy away from things like that, but when it came to like conflict is really hard for me. Um, or I'd have the things trapped in my mind, what I wanted to say and I wouldn't say out loud. And then now today as a 35 year old adult, I feel like I just have to get these things out and it doesn't matter. Um, how big my audience gets it doesn't matter how small it is I just think that I know some people will agree some people won't agree and conversations like this do need to be had and I'm thankful that there's other influencers out there who are saying things kind of similar to what I've said but more on it like a professional knowledge like um a more educated view of um more specifics because I'm still new to this and it's not something that I I kind of needed to put my diagnosis away for a bit and not reflect again I kind of like it was like the build up towards getting diagnosed and then it was like relief and then I kind of just need to sit with it for a bit and now it's like I'm kind of ready to get back to more into the education of it all to really get so I'm not spreading false information and so I'm um, just doing what I think is right and trying to help others. And I just appreciate the people out there who do appreciate the spectrum and don't think that we need to like, like, oh, so what someone said was, you know, autism is not about intelligence. So yes, that's the main point. Autism is not like, let's go back in history. They just used to call... I'm like, sorry, they used to call people back then, like, you or I, or, like, or in history, like, the R word and stuff. So, only the lowest, like, ugh, I need to stop saying that. Um... Anyway, I'm taking back what I said. It's not even worth saying, but it's, that is like very true. Like autism is not solely based on intelligence because not everyone is going to have the exact same IQ. And there's some autistic people who are like savants and then there's some autistic people who are like, you know, have more needs and 
So that's just what I find interesting because there are some people who are literally savants. So they're allowed to be autistic and then the ones with extreme needs are allowed to be autistic, but then the rest of us guys in the middle like aren't allowed. Anyway, I don't think my video is going to change any minds and on it. I just hope that they do consider the hurtful words that they say, um, especially, you know, towards people who are autistic, um, fat, fat phobia. I kind of thought we were past that point in 2024. <laughs> and, um, like de I'm definitely filter free too, but I just noticed this pattern. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, my videos that are really more down negative and whatever do pretty bad. And then my videos that are more upbeat and positive definitely do better. And I can, or are more informative, do better. I completely understand that, but sometimes I just need to vent, especially on occasions like this. And I would like to end the video now. I don't think... Oh. So, I don't think there's much more I want to say um, today. I'm sure I could think of some points and continue on and on and on and on, but I think I've said enough for now. And also... I do want to say also that there's no like ill, uh, I have no like hatred towards this person that I'm speaking of. I, um, I still think they're like an awesome parent towards their children and they, um, are informative in a lot of ways and they've helped their child in a lot of ways, but then I think Hopefully that they learn to dial it down in term. I hope like somebody that they look up to kind of shuts them down and makes them see a different point of view for a change on this subject because like, you know, I just think that's kind of necessary because I don't feel like there should be people on the show which are spreading mis misinformation or like gatekeeping what autism should be like leave it to the doctors and the psychologists and psychiatrists and everyone out there just doing their best to try to help people and not don't use your one life and your one example as the whole rule book for autism because that's just never going to happen it's a spectrum for a reason they made it that way for a reason and i'm sure i've expressed that point enough now okay well thank you for watching my video please like comment subscribe i'm willing to take all the hate comments if need be um i still will like see your point of view but i will like defend my point of view um And I strongly recommend that anybody who's watched my video thus far to please watch my video about 50 signs of I was a child with autism because you'll, you might be pleasant or <laughs> you might be quite surprised at the things that I suffered with as a child compared to now. Like I kind of get this feeling, I mean, this is just me completely judging myself because no one here is telling me or judging me or telling me like, whatever but I get the feeling that if anyone were to just tune into my videos right off the bat a lot of them would say oh you don't like seem autistic in some ways well let me just tell you I was like an expert masker pretty well not an expert I suffered in like a lot of ways school relationships education like work everything so but there was a time in my life where I was like very low functioning in a way of like 
just emotionally and intellectually and sensory, just everything was, and, um, anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> it's hard to end my videos. It always feels awkward, like saying goodbye. <laughs> okay. And I will make it part two if needed. I'll make an apology video if needed. Um, hopefully, I, I don't think I've said anything that's way out of line. I don't think I've said anything like very, like any, like labeled. I am a struggling autistic person who's like living in poverty. So, um. Okay, have a good day.